What's up, you guys? Void here coming back at y'all with another Commander Deck Tech video for a patron of mine. March is going to end here sooner or later. But we got another cool one here for Link House Effect. Been a little while since I did a Deck Tech for him, but he's come back with another request. This time it's for Una, Queen of the Fae. Now it looks like he wanted it to be two different things here. He wanted it to be an optimized deck, but he didn't want to have any of the infinite mana combos, which if you don't know, if you have infinite mana with Una, you pretty much just win the game or at least until they have their upkeep and then they can't draw a card and then they lose so really deadly if you go for the infinite combos which fully optimized it's very difficult to not win with an una deck but we're going to try our best here i settled for a different combo it's not infinite but it's going to make it easy to at least put a bunch of mana into x may not be infinite but it's definitely powerful so if you don't know what una is basically i just mentioned the activated ability she is six mana in hybrid blue black for a five five flying legendary fairy wizard you choose a color and then target opponent exiles the top x cards of their library for each card of the chosen color exiled this way you get a 1-1 blue black fairy rogue creature token with flying so that's really the engine that this deck is going to want to work around getting a bunch of mana and you could either choose to just mill out your opponents that way which is better because it is exiling type of mill or you could just try to swing with a whole army of those fairies which isn't really what this deck is meant to do but it's still an option as always always we're going to take a look at our lands and we have a bunch of utility ones we have an academy ruins because we're playing a bunch of artifacts and we want to be able to get some back cabal coffers and we also have the other card in here that's going to combo with it but cabal coffers is going to make it to where we get black mana for each swamp we control so the more swamps the better and definitely when we have an x cost and an activated ability we have a deserted temple to untap said cabal coffers so that we can then tap it again get even more black mana we also have a nick those in here which we're going to talk about here in a minute getting more mana pretty much what i just said what we want to do nykthos shrine to nyx kind of the same deal not as easy to take advantage of because devotion's a lot harder to get than swamps we have Teleria West. This is pretty sweet. Transmute. If you transmute a land, you're going to be searching up a converted mana cost zero spell, which there are a bunch of those mana rocks. Not all of them are in here, but they are CMC zero that are going to make it easy with another card in this deck to combo with. So we do have a combo. It's not infinite, but it's still necessary. And then we of course have Urborg Tomb of Yogmoth because with Cabal Coffers, each of your lands being a swamp is going to make it even easier to get more mana. Moving on to our artifacts. This is a very important part of the deck. We have Chrome Mox and Mana Crypt. These are the two zero CMC cards that we want to transmute Artillaria West to get. Chrome Mox is going to make it to where we have a way to get colored mana. Not every single card is going to be valuable in our hand, so we're more than happy to imprint it. Mana Crypt, one of the best cards in the format, really. Two mana for zero at the cost of damage. Who really cares? Mana Vault, one mana taps for three. Has the condition where it doesn't untap unless you pay four. Sensei's Divining Top is going to make it to where the top deck that we do have is going to be something we prefer out of those three cards. Skull Clamp is actually a very important card in this deck. I didn't realize it at first, but if you're able to search up artifacts, this is definitely one you want to search up, because once you do get a bunch of mana, you're going to want to use this on the fairy tokens that you get, so that you can then just draw two cards for one mana, draw two cards for one mana, and then hopefully with another card that we have in here, we can just go infinite that way, without technically going infinite, but you're pretty much going to win. We have a Soul Ring, because obviously why not? not we're playing the other one so duh we have a dimir signet gonna get us the mana that we need in color form because her activated ability does require to have one hybrid blue black so you might as well get something a felwar stone not a terrible way to get the mana that we need but who knows your opponents are probably going to be playing one of those two colors grim monolith to add to the ramp with our artifacts also has the it doesn't untap condition but usually with the card that we're playing it's going to untap we have a lightning grease because there are some situations where we need to sit a whole turn on una and we don't want our opponents to remove her easily mind stone yet another awesome artifact can sacrifice itself to draw us a card really the main reason why it's in here we have a talisman of dominance kind of like dimir signet gonna give us some mana fixing if we need it thought vessel we have no maximum hand size basalt monolith kind of like grim monolith doesn't untap during her untap step 
a Thran Dynamo. I could go on forever. There's a whole bunch of artifacts that are just like these that are going to give you a ton of mana. I don't think we have every single one of them in here, but we definitely have the best ones. We have Gilded Lotus. This one is honestly the best because it's going to get you three mana of any one color. So blue or black, which is really what you want because you're going to be comboing with this next card, Paradox Engine. All the other artifacts I just mentioned, if you have cantrips, if you have anything else that can keep your turn going, you're going to be floating a bunch of mana until eventually you can just start exiling libraries away. And that's how we win with this deck. Even if we don't win, we have a way to potentially get a whole bunch of fairies, which in itself can be a win con. But now you really see what I meant by comboing without technically going infinite, because that's really what this is. We're not going to go infinite, but we're going to get a whole bunch of mana. To me, this is a little bit more rewarding. It's not cheap, it's not a two-card combo, but it does take a lot of setup. Moving on to our creatures, we have 12 of them. We have a Walking Ballista, kind of another way that we can deal with our opponents if we have a bunch of mana just floating not the best way to do it though but hopefully if we have a whole bunch of mana we can just deal a lot of damage to a player and win that way if not it's a free casting for zero because you can have xb zero and trigger paradox engine baleful strix is going to draw a card when it enters the battlefield awesome creature jace friends prodigy really just meant to be in here for drawing it's a good creature tap it to draw a card and then discard and then once it does flip you have a way to get a lot of those instants and sorceries back Back. Snapcaster Mage, getting more castings of instants and sorceries in your graveyard. We do play a lot of them, so it is important. Scion of Una. This is one of the ways that we can win with our fairies. Give them all an anthem. Give them all shroud. Make them very difficult to deal with. Trinket Mage is going to get us a Chrome Mox or a Mana Crypt or anything CMC1 like a Soul Ring. Crypt Ghast is going to double our Swamp Mana, which is really important for Una. The activated ability is X costed. Then we have a Glenelendra Arc Mage, technically considered a fairy, but more importantly, in here to deal with our opponent stuff on the turn that we want to combo just playing one blue to counter a non-creature spell on an activated ability that is very difficult to counter that you're going to protect your combos you're going to keep your turn going glenelendra liege this one is amazing with our fairy tokens because they're all technically blue black creatures they're going to get plus two plus two so if we have a bunch of them out there it does pose a serious threat then we have a phyrexian metamorph we have a bunch of artifacts which is usually what we're going to go to but if we want to do something funny like copy a glenelendra liege and just make it to where all of our fairies are going to be massive five fives that's just sweet and then we have a solemn simulacrum a good advantage creature does what it's supposed to do a consecrated sphinx to finish up our creatures gets us a bunch of card draw Whenever an opponent draws a card, we get to draw two of them. So there's a bunch of value there, especially the turn before we want to go off. It's never a bad thing to play a Consecrated Sphinx. We have one Planeswalker in the form of Tezzeret the Seeker. Really in here to get our mana ramp artifacts. It can't get us our Paradox Engine, but it can do something like get us any sort of mana rock that we need that's going to make it easier for us to then combo. That's pretty nice, but also allows us to float mana with this plus because we can then untap up to two artifacts. Moving on to our Enchantment we have six of them we have mystic remora in a combo deck this is just the perfect card because our opponents are likely not going to pay four mana whenever they cast a non-creature spell to prevent us from drawing a card so they're either not going to play a non-creature spell or they're just going to let you draw the card even if you don't want to pay the cumulative upkeep it's still worth it because chances are you're going to draw a bunch of cards during a turn cycle necropotence kind of the same deal when you want to go off, you want to go off and you don't really care about life or any sort of consequences because you're so set on winning that turn. You might as well get as many cards as you can just to look at. Even if you end up discarding into exile, it's still worth it. Phyrexian Arena is good setup earlier on in the game. Ristic Study, kind of like Mystic Remora, but instead of just non-creature spells, it's going to end up being all spells. And it's easier to pay the tax, but still, it has a presence in the game. Leyline of Anticipation is sweet. You get to set up earlier on. If your opponents want to do something during that turn cycle that you normally would play something, playing something at your opponent's end step makes it harder for them to do that. Dire Undercurrents is fantastic with this deck because the fairies that we're going to get off of Una are blue-black, so you get both of these triggers. Whenever a blue creature comes into play under your control, you get to have target player draw a card, so that target player could be you. Whenever a black creature comes into play under your control, you get to have target player discard a card, so you can have both things happen. Then we have 12 sorceries. We have Ponder, Preordain. Two of the best cantrips in the format. Really going to get the job done. Keep your turn going. Trigger Paradox Engine, etc. Demonic Tutor gets us our Paradox Engine or other combo pieces. 
whatever we need at the moment. We do have a backup plan in Exsanguinate. This one is a little bit better than a Walking Ballista because it really means that even if you don't have enough to kill off every single one of your opponents, you're putting yourself way ahead in the game. We have a Knight's Whisper, yet another Cantrip. You're drawing two cards, losing two life. Pretty flexible in the mana cost as well. Torment of Hailfire, kind of the same deal as Exsanguinate, but this one, I would say you need even less mana to really make this deadly. Because if you can just put like 10 mana into X, which is super easy in this deck, you can win pretty easily. We have a Fabricate to get our Paradox Engine, obviously, but we could settle for a Skull Clamp, anything like that. Toxic Deluge, never really hurts to have some removal in here. A Yogmoth's Will, he did say he want this to be relatively optimized so why not play a card that is capable of getting us back a lot of the cards from our graveyard it's going to help keep our turn going especially if we have a bunch of mana we don't necessarily know what to do with it damnation more removal dark petition is an awesome tutor because it's going to give us three black mana back because we're likely going to have spell mastery so it really ends up just being a demonic tutor then we have a time spiral this is really if you want to go with storm if you want to go with any sort of deck idea where the whole purpose is just keeping your turn going so that you can keep comboing time spiral is the best card ever because it's going to give you a fresh hand to choose from it's going to untap your lands this is pretty much free and it's going to trigger paradox engine keep your turn going amazing and then the last part of the deck is instance we have 15 of them we have pact of negation if the turn you want to combo off your opponents have answers zero mana even though your next upkeep you have to pay five it really doesn't matter because this is the best card you could have in a combo deck you don't want to think about your next turn you want to do everything this turn so the consequences during your next upkeep really don't matter brainstorm another cantrip maybe not as good as ponder or preordain but still going to keep your turn going high tide going to get you more mana mystical tutor instance and sorceries whichever one you need you get to put one of them on the top of your library at instant speed same thing with vampiric tutor but this works for any card and you do lose two life we have an arcane denial this one while i wouldn't say it keeps your turn going going it's more or less just going to get you card draw which even if it is just one on a counter spell that's only two mana you can't really beat that we do have counter spell because it's you know also two mana super efficient cyclonic rift because we have the ability to get a bunch of mana and usually overloading for seven is going to get the job done make it harder for our opponents to gang up on us we have a dramatic reversal because in combination with paradox engine this is going to allow us to float a whole bunch of mana then we do have a limb duels vault perfect card for comboing you want to get the pieces that you need this is going to make it to where you get the best five cards on the top of your library that you can it does cost you life to do that but usually if you want to combo off the turn you want to combo off as i said said before doesn't matter mana drain floating mana getting more mana excess mana perfect with una getting it on a counter spell is even better we have a disallow counters a target spell or an activated ability or a triggered ability really versatile belongs to just about every single blue deck in the format and then we have my personal favorite cantrip in frantic search because it's going to draw you two cards you discard two and then you untap up to three lands so it's basically free and you keep your turn going you trigger paradox engine as i said before floating even more mana we do have a war of invention which is honestly one of my favorite cards that come out last year improvise is basically convoke but for artifacts and you get to search up your paradox engine maybe your skull clamp if you want to spend even less mana instant speed to do that but doing this instant speed means that you have the advantage of timing yet again and then we finish up the deck tech with a force of will because as i said before comboing is very important making it to where we don't have to pay that much mana or no mana at all to stop our opponents to keep our turn going is important so anyway guys that's going to do it for this deck tech hope you enjoyed it you guys feel free to leave any suggestions in the comment section below as always you guys have a wonderful day void here signing off See you all next video.